Hello, I'm Chris Menard. Today I'm going to cover Microsoft Excel Quick Analysis. It is a really nice feature, especially if you're brand new to Excel or even an experienced user. There's some cool features in there. Uh, 2019 is quickly winding down. Today is Saturday, 1221. Before the year ends, I'll take a look at my top five videos of 2019, which will include Excel's XLOOKUP function, which is a really cool function that's replacing VLOOKUP and replacing INDEX and MATCH. And those are not going away, just to be clear. But let's go ahead and get, get started with this quick analysis. So I have three months of data. And then I have three products. I just made this up. I'm going to simply highlight it first. Quick analysis will show up in the bottom right corner. You can use the keyboard shortcut control Q if you want to. I'm going to run through, if you notice it's formatting charts, totals, tables, and spark lines. I'm going to run through most of those today, but I'm going to hit the highlights real quick. I'm going to start off with totals. If I go to totals, the minute I click totals, it gives me different options. If you notice, I've got blue, but then I have yellow. And if I hit this arrow pointing to the right, it shows me more options for yellow. So here's how this works. I'm going to start off with an easy one. It's basically saying I'm going to sum up every month. Click it. I'm going to go back to quick analysis back to totals the yellow says it's going to do column e so if i click in column e it just summed up column e if you take a look at shirts 10 plus 40 plus 30 is 80. so i summed up with quick analysis totals i did the bottom and i did the column over to the right column e i'm going to do a couple undos just to get back here so i've got a1 to D4 selected, quick analysis. What I want to also show you under totals is not only will it do the average, which I could do with the average function, it'll also do the count, which I could do with the count function, or count A if it applied. But what's cool is it will do running totals. So January, the 10, the 20, the 30 are obviously 60. So 60 for the first month, plus 40, 15, and 25 for February, totals up 140. So, Feb so February alone is not 140, it's January plus February. And then add in March, and that's 240, so that would be running. The percentage back on that 240 so we've got 240 in D5, the percentage of the total, January is 60. 60 divided by 240 is 25%. So these numbers, these percentages are correct. It's the percentage of the total, in case you're wondering what it's doing. And again, though, I could also do it over here for column E. So I can do it at the bottom or the right. That's why I like this quick analysis stuff. Another cool feature. So right now, nothing's going on. I have A1 to D4 selected. If I go to formatting at the top, I love data bars. And it's smart enough to only pick up the numbers. So it's given me a graphical representation of the numbers. If I click it, that's what I have. Let's test it. I'm going to change January, which is 10. That was like the smallest number I have. I'm going to make it 100. Watch what happens when I press enter. The data bars automatically change. I'm going to do an undo to get back there. I'm going to do one more undo to show you that. Highlight it. Come here. Formatting data bars. I don't use a lot of colors, but I know people do use colors. You can tweak this. Icons will by default give you arrows. Um, you can lose the yellow arrow if you need to just show positive versus negative. But one that I use all the time, greater than. If I click on greater than, okay, I want to know numbers. I'm making this up. 
over 22 for some reason. There they are. Again, I'm going to undo. In case you're wondering, where is, when I go to quick analysis, formatting, where are these coming from? They're coming from the Home tab, the Styles group, Conditional Formatting, Data Bars. There are all your options for Data Bars right here, so you don't have to use what it gives you. Uh, there were the icon, the color icons, the icon sets. One that they don't have that I use all the time is I want to know what numbers are above or below the average. That is a top bottom rule. Above average. Click OK. There are the numbers above the average. In case you're wondering what is the average, if you look in the bottom right corner, it is 26.666 going on. So that is correct. Those are the numbers above the average. Undo. The totals we've covered, formatting we've covered, which is conditional formatting. Let's do some charts. So I'm going from scratch here. I'm going to highlight A1 to D4. Charts. I like to do column charts a lot, plus I like pie charts, and I use line charts. But I always use the correct chart when appropriate. I'm going to go with a clustered column chart. This is a good chart. There it is right there. There are my numbers and months. What's cool about the quick analysis is I just did one chart. I still have all my data selected. Charts. You can still do another chart. I'm going to come in here. I want to know for January, the 10, the 20, and the 30. That equals 60. And then we have February, and then we have March. I intentionally made this equal 100. I can do a stat chart. So I'm not limited to just doing one chart. I can just keep using quick analysis. There is March totaling up 100. There's January totaling up 60. So that is charts with quick analysis. Similar to charts, um, I like to call many charts as spark lines. To do a chart, you would go to insert charts. But notice we have spark lines over here and we have three different options. So here it is with quick analysis. Column E is currently empty. And I like to call these mini charts. So there's charts. We just did it. But here's spark lines. And there are the three options I just showed you. So we have win loss. I wouldn't use this one in this example. That's great when you have negatives. Columns. That one's pretty good. I possibly would use that one. But here's line also. I'm going to just pick lines. And look, many charts are placed in a single cell. So there you go. One thing that's cool about spark lines is once you've done them, you can quickly identify the negative points and the, well, we don't have any negatives, my bad. You could identify the negatives, but you can do, identify the high points and the low points, but I'm going to just do the high points. So there's some spark lines right there. I'm going to undo that. And the last one, one more last one, I've got it all selected. Spark lines, charts, totals I've covered. Here is tables. I love tables. Feel free to subscribe to my class on tables. It's absolutely free. I show you 10 reasons to use tables instead of a data range. But I'm going to make this a table. You're saying, what's so good about a table? If I come over here and type in the word total, first of all, my filters are running. If you notice, everything's got a filter. When I typed in total, it put it in column E. I'm going to sum up. I know I've only got three rows of data, but assume I've got 30,000. I'm going to sum up B2 to D2. Watch what happens when I press enter. This is called a calculated column. It fills it all the way down. Again, assume I had uh, 300,000. There you go. Anyway, feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel. 
I'll have my top five videos of 2019 coming out. I ended up making 112 videos this year. I appreciate your support for my channel. Feel free to subscribe. Have a good weekend. Thank you.